I'd like to welcome you to the fifth annual Wharton People Analytics Conference. We are delighted you're here. We're impressed that you're here. And we're thankful that you're here. Looking forward to this. We've been working on this for a year now, and we've been working intensely for six months. So we're glad to finally be off the ground. This is our fifth year, and we thought it made sense to take a look at the industry and where the industry is, just to set some context. Our friends at LinkedIn made a presentation three years ago at PAC2 on the state of the industry. They tap into their data, and they, sit, they tell us about the spread and growth of people analytics under any guise, talent analytics, workforce analytics, what has it looked like? They were gracious enough to update their presentation for us this year. We will be sharing it in different ways. I'm sure they will be, Microsoft will be, but we wanted to give you a preview and one quick overview of the industry. According to the LinkedIn data, this is what has happened since 2009. We've seen an almost threefold increase in companies practicing people analytics. We're now over 5,000 companies, 58% of which have only started in the five, last five years, so it's still a relatively new thing. And 47% of the Fortune 1000 have this function um, in their organization. The biggest number that jumps out to me about this summary, besides the nice growth curve there, is the missing number, the 53%. 53% of the Fortune 1000 still aren't using people analytics. And that means I think we'll continue to see this kind of growth for a while and that the opportunity is still quite large. And it's one of the reasons that we're here today. Last year was the first time that I personally saw the cumulative effect of our conferences beginning to manifest. We talked to people who had met at the conference and started working together or started friendships. We, we talked to people who had come to PAC 2 looking for a job and came back to PAC 3 working for one of their organizations. And one of my favorites, we had a student who had competed in the case competition at PAC 1 and came back in the startup competition at PAC 4. And we love to see that kind of cumulative effect and those kinds of relationships taking place. To facilitate that a little bit, we thought that we would unpack some of the, some of the demographics about you guys. So just tell you a little bit about who's here, who's in the room, who are you going to be interacting with for the next two days. First, you've come a long way. This is a, a quick and dirty map of the home offices of the attendees at the PAC conference. And we have become more international than ever for us, where over 65 of you are coming from an international office. We're represented in every corner of the world, except for, suspiciously, except for Russia. Here in the United States, the cities that provide the most attendees are kind of obvious, Philadelphia, New York, Seattle, and Redmond. Uh, San Francisco. Who do you think is number five, though? Who's the fifth most well-represented city here at the conference? It surprised me. Washington, D.C. So we have 20 people from Washington, D.C. Right behind Washington, Toronto. Toronto's another city I wouldn't have known was going to be so well-represented. Re if you look around, you'll notice that we are more diverse than most analytics gatherings. We're delighted that 46% of the attendees are female. And if you keep a look at the judges and the case competitions and the panelists, you'll see females represented well throughout the program. Top employers, uh, tech, predictably, tech. And where's the, where, are the Googlers here? Did you guys make it in? You're getting housed by Microsoft. You got some work to do, Google. Not just tech, though. Financial services, pharmaceuticals, consumer packaging, aviation. We have not one, but two major aviation manufacturers here. It's, it's nice to see people analytics working in the heavy industry. We have Sports teams, Cubs, Indians, Phillies, Eagles, Maple Leafs, Colts, all here. We can learn a lot from sports teams. They're some of the most advanced people analytics organizations out there, but they clearly believe they can learn something from you guys as well. We have not-for-profits here. We're about 10% government and not-for-profit, by the way. The conference is a good blend. We, at least it's a blend. We've aimed for a blend of academia and industry. And we're about 30% academia, 70% industry. But we have about 10% not-for-profit in government. And that's a cause that we feel strongly about, and we want to grow that. We have Global Health Corps here. Global Health Corps is our case competition partner this year. And we have Teach for America, Doctors Without Borders, Nurse Family Partnership is in the queue to be working with us next year. So not-for-profits are well represented. 
digging down a little more uh, in a little more detail, I was tickled to see a few of the jobs here, share them with you just to let you know some of the diversity of, of the kinds of people that are here. The head of social physics at ExxonMobil is here. So if you think your organization is advanced in people analytics, you should know that ExxonMobil has a social physics group. The ICU nurse leader from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center is here. The senior HR data analyst from the Port of Portland is here. So the Port of Portland, working with HR analytics. About 75% of you are here for the first time. So you should know that if you just walked in here for the first time, you're not alone in that. But that does mean about 150 of you have been here before. And in fact, over five years, there are five of you in this room who have been here every time. There are five people here who are five for five, and this is beyond me and Adam, this is five for five of you. Ethan Burris from the University of Texas, Michael Haugen from GH Smart, Don Klinghoffer from Microsoft, Karen Marciniak from Mercer, and Shane Jensen, our very own faculty member here at Wharton, have been here every time. These guys have helped us judge competitions, they've given talks, they've been on panels, and we very much appreciate what they have done. We're trying to come up with a special button for you guys to wear to embarrass you a little bit more between now and the end of the conference. A few words of thanks before we kick this thing off. Our sponsors are critical to this conference. We work to keep it affordable. We try to stay under the industry standards. We know it's still an expensive conference, but it's much more affordable because of the sponsor's involvement. But they actually do much more than just provide funds. These guys provide manpower to us. They provide expertise in the competitions. They give us feedback over the course of the year. They give us ideas. They're critical for the conference, and we're hugely thankful for them. I want to say a thanks to my two main collaborators on this year in, year out. I've stood here for five years, and I've never thanked Adam Grant, my partner on this thing, which is ridiculous considering all that Adam does. It won't surprise you that Adam is as good a rainmaker for speakers as there exists anywhere, and I'm thankful for that. But you may not know what, how amazing he is just as a worker. I mean, Adam is the most persistent, energetic, unflagging collaborator I've ever had and it makes my life so much easier, but it's also inspiring, and it makes me, I, I hope, over time, a better contributor. So many thanks to Adam. Our other continuing collaborator is Lara Zaro, who's our executive director. She came on board about two and a half years ago. She does more than just this conference. She helps us with all Wharton people analytics, and Lara is this amazing blend of artist, family builder, and a person who can keep the trains running on time. It's an amazing combination for us, and we're utterly dependent on her. Finally, and most importantly, I want to say a word about the students. This is a unique collaboration at Wharton in that it is truly a student, faculty, staff conference. There are many academic conferences at Wharton run by faculty. There are dozens of conferences at Wharton run by students. This is the only one that is truly a collaboration between the, first, between the faculty and, and students. When we first started, the school didn't know what to do with us. We suggested this thing, and they didn't know where to put it. And at this point, I think we've given them an example of something that can be done, and we're much better off for it being a collaboration between faculty and students, not least because they do most of the work. Over time, though, beautifully, they have contributed more than just man manpower and labor. These guys, I've seen it firsthand in our office on a regular basis, they're contributing ideas, they're contributing speaker ideas, topics, they're shaping the conference in a very substantive way. And it wouldn't happen, and it wouldn't happen as well as it does if not for them. When you see the students, please, when you see the students over the next couple of days, shake their hand, say hello to them. I can tell you from working with them on a regular basis for literally the last six months that they're also inspiring and they make us better. I think they make, they make us better. So I hope one of these days to be as insightful as Julie McComish, as wise as Alana Zola, and as poised as our conference chair, Nicola, Nicole Munji. So, Let's get started. We're here for the same two reasons. We've always been here from the very beginning. We said these are the things we're looking for. We're looking for sharing ideas and building relationships. So we've set a program we hope is good for that, but it's up to you guys to dig in, to reach out, to open up. But hopefully after the end of two days, you've heard some new ideas and you've built some new relationships. So I'm going to turn it over to the first of our students who is going to introduce us, one of our team members, Emily Yu. And thank you guys again for being here. 